What it do? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to Remy Be Real. This is a special episode of Adjust, Adapt, Achieve. Man needs no introduction. We've got a newly minted triathlete, Michael Coe. How you feeling, brother? What it do? Yo, what's going on, Remy? It's good to be here, and uh, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, it's It's been a little journey that um, I feel like we've been navigating together, um, mm-hmm. and coming from different angles, trying to get at the same thing. Um, just to put it out there, the nature of this show, Adjust, Adapt, Achieve, we're going to look at the adjustments you had to make to make this happen, the adaptations along the way, and we'll celebrate the achievements. So right off the jump, coming from a guy who runs basically every day and Mm -hmm. you're dipping your toes into something new, um, what was the cycle like? What was new? What was different? What was unfamiliar? Yeah, so I had to cut down a lot on the running. I mean, I love running every day. And so that was kind of like, at first I was like, this is a bummer. I mean, how, I was like, can I just do brick workouts every day? Because then I could still run every day. But then I was like, no, I got to spend more time on some of this other stuff. And so realizing not only like, uh, I probably can't get away with like doing some of these other disciplines less that I had to spend a lot more time doing these other disciplines more was a big adjustment for me. I thought that I would take to a lot of it easier, not to say that triathlon is easy, but I really didn't think it was going to be this hard. And so that was the biggest adjustment. Like that hit me right away. I was like, ooh, this is gonna be different. So like, I gotta figure some stuff out. You know, it's interesting you say that because I feel like from the outside looking in, it's easy to think that, okay, so I just add a little bit of cycling and swimming to what I'm already doing and good to go. But then once you get into it and I was finding that, oh goodness, like you said, cutting back on the running a lot. Um, But did you ever feel like you missed any of the running? I mean, in a way, no, I didn't like miss it, like to uh, a serious extent that I felt like, you know, I didn't really feel like I was sabotaging my triathlon training because I missed it so much. Cause what ended up happening is it just took out some of those recovery runs and those easy runs. And instead, like when I did get to run, it was a workout day. It was a big day. So like I had all like the most fun parts of the run with, I mean, I love easy runs. So like I missed some of the other parts of running that I also really love, but then instead I just, it was just going to be an easy six or an easy four or whatever, like easy run that was going to be that day. Instead, I'd be like a hard swim or a swim and a bike kind of day. So like, you know, there was good ways of kind of like substituting you know, this for that in ways that maybe feel like I was not missing out on anything. Yeah, well, and and coming at it from where I stand, um, I felt that this was more of a, I never got burned out on anything. You know, I never had an opportunity for anything to be too taxing, to ever get to a point where, man, I don't want to do there was never a point where I didn't want to do any of it, you know, Mm -hmm. because there was just such variety in that, all right, you have a tough run. That's cool. You're not going to run again for like another day or two. So that's fine. You're just going to. Yeah. But like, for me, I also felt like a little bit, um, like I, I understand what hard training for a half marathon or hard training for a marathon looks like. I don't understand yet what hard training for a triathlon looks like. Cause there'd be days where I'd be like, at the end of the week, I'd look at my total hours of exercise and it'd be way more than I would ever run in a week. And I'd be like, but I don't feel wrecked. Like if I ran, if I spent that much time on feet, my body would be complaining. But instead I just felt like I'm tired. I'm definitely tired, but I don't feel like uh, I'm taking abuse. So like, I feel like some of that non-impact exercising definitely helped in terms of like, I think like kind of longevity, being able to get through those weeks. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I felt like I don't really know what a swim workout looks like. I probably have not really worked hard in the pool ever yet still, just because I don't know how to push myself that way. But I don't, also felt like I was on the bike, but if I only did one like discipline in a day, I felt like, am I not working hard enough? I, I always just weird? didn't know like, what does working hard look like yet? I don't that know. That was super strange where, you know, I'd look at my plan and 
I, I feel like we can say this and uh, you know, other people in the space will know exactly what it is, but those days where, oh goodness, it's just a <laughs> insert here. I just have one of these, knowing that many a days are, okay, well, as soon as I finish this swim, I gotta hurry up and go run, or I'm gonna get off the bike and then go run, or I'm gonna do any combination of these two, sometimes three things in a day. So when I'd see, and again, I train off of time and not mm -hmm. just a, a set mileage. So if I'd see, you know, a 90 minute run, is that it? Oh, yeah. great. <laughs> It's like, like uh, is it so? This must be the easy day then, you know. Like that's kind of how I how I saw it, um, and especially for like if I was like just having just a swim on the day, I'm like, oh, today's the rest day, then I guess because I, I just don't I don't I don't know I'm not like I'm very very new to all these things, and so like it was um, a little bit disorienting to not like for my body to not really know like how hard am I supposed to go with it? I don't know because like I don't think I had a rest day in the in the buildup for like two months but i also didn't feel like i needed one i mean I, coming from a guy that likes to run seven days a week right. i mean one of those days two of those days a week is usually like definitely a lower like an easier gear for sure but during triathlon training i just felt like every day was kind of something not that i went hard every day but like because i i wouldn't have been able to do that but like i just didn't feel like i needed a rest day because like then I would just do something else that needed well, more time. And, and I think a piece of this that needs a little bit of clarifying is there were some of these workouts and we'll, we'll, the elephant in the room is uh, we're not swimmers. <laughs> right, right. So I feel like a lot of those swim days <laughs> where maybe not uh, physically taxing, though there were some days where I got to tell you, I came back and my tries were burning, my mm -hmm. obliques were on fire. Uh, so I think I was doing it right. <laughs> but, you know, I, I was gassed. You know, yeah. you're swimming for a half hour, 35 minutes. And in the grand scheme of things, I feel like I could run half an hour, no problem. Exactly. Yeah. A warm up on the bike, mm -hmm. but I'm in the water for 35 minutes. And are we done yet? Yeah, no, I, I I could certainly relate to that too. And I also think that like part of why I didn't feel like the swimming was like hard. I mean, it's difficult, but it wasn't like, um, I, I never really had like, when people talk about like they're doing like a workout or some hard reps, I'm like, I can't, I can't do hard reps because all, all I have is one kind of rep. Um, but I either have like swimming where I'm just flailing in the water or I have drills. And some of the drills, I do feel like I'm slowly drowning. Like anything when I'm doing on the side, like that side breathing one always makes me sure. feel like I'm just drinking the pool. I feel like those giant whales that come through and just drink all the water and then they like filter out like the food. I feel like I'm swimming like that with my mouth open because I just drink the pool. But like those drills are, are difficult and like mentally they're taxing, but they're not like physically demanding like a hard, like a threshold run or a fart lick would be. So like the swimming was like a different gear for me and also you're in water so it's not non-impact so like that that just was very 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 different yeah and i also felt that um maybe about let's say 10 minutes after i was out of the pool i felt great i was fine mm -hmm. versus you know some of these runs where i just want to lay down for a little bit put my feet up yeah. against the wall or something like mm -hmm. that like well once i was done and i could catch my breath that was it um, mm -hmm. But you said something that uh, triggered uh, a whole wave of thoughts for me. Okay. Is this idea of um, getting comfortable with water in your mouth. Mm -hmm. And I think there were so many of those things that while I'm sure like me, you were getting a lot of uh, advice thrown your mm -hmm. way, there were still so many things in all that advice, no one told me. Mm -hmm that I was just going to have water in my mouth and you need to be comfortable with that. Yeah, yeah. On top of that, I had no idea. And I promise you, the very first time I got over to the deep end, it was a a huge milestone for me. I didn't know there was a ledge. <laughs> no one told me. So I part of my hesitance to even go over there is then what? You know, like yeah, yeah. I swim yeah. all the way over and then what? I'm I'm out of air. How do I gather and come back? And then I had a buddy come over there and meet me on the, oh, I can just stand. 
Yeah. If you tell me, dude. Yeah, well, you know, I didn't have any pools with ledges that I could oh. stand on. Because all the pools that I swam in were, like, the gym that I go to, it's, like, three and a half, like, four feet deep. So, like, when my sit legs are sinking, like, they'll literally drag along the bottom of the pool sometimes if it gets that bad, you know. Not often, but sometimes it does. Um, and then the other pool that I was swimming at in Iowa, that one, you know, I was swimming in relatively shallow water too. Like not, I don't think quite five feet. So I was always in really shallow water. That was the deepest water I've ever been in during the triathlon. Wow. I mean, for like swimming. I mean, like I've been into like pools with really deep ends where you can like dive in and stuff. But like in terms of like swimming, swimming, that was the deepest I'd ever been in. That's that's wild. I, I feel like something, it, it triggered something for me where uh, my form would just get right once I crossed that black line and knew I was mm -hmm. going into the deep. Like, mm -hmm. all right, dude, don't mess it up now. Because I knew I could, like, <laughs> okay, I could take a breath and kind of exhale. Yeah. And if whatever, worst case scenario, just stand up once I yeah, get yeah. back to the shallow. Uh -huh. But it was always this mental cue for me that, okay, there it is. Lock it up. Lock it up. And I think that did a lot for me. I never made it out to a uh, 50 meter pool. And mm -hmm. I think that would have done a lot too, because once I get to the wall, listen, I'm, I'm gathering myself, I'm hanging out. I can't flip turn, I can't. So I yeah. never had that long continuous uh, swim uh, until I got up to the ocean. Yeah, uh, you know, I tried to make a habit of it because I was always at short pools of like, all right, only rest on the way back, right? And so like, whenever you're on the other side and you know, I always just be like, touch the wall. I don't know how to flip turn either. And just like turn around and kicking like, and then just push off the wall and go back. Um, I mean, sometimes I'd be like, oh my goggles have some water in them. So I gotta <laughs> fix them. So like sometimes I kind of like make excuses, but <laughs> That's right. you know, I always tried to make it of a habit of like always swim a 50, you know, don't swim any 25s, but that was just something that I worked on. But let me tell you, I haven't done that. I did, it didn't help when I got into the big open water anyway. But I do agree with you that like, I would like to go swim and like, you know, I see on on YouTube, I mean, I watched a lot of YouTube videos. I see them all the time, like all these giant pools that people are swimming in. I'm like, where are these places? I don't know a single person that's like, yeah, I'm on this swim team and we go and we swim together in a group like Tuesday, Thursday. Like, I don't know anybody like that. I've never been to a place like that. Like I would have to Google it to be like, where even is that? And I assume that I'd have to drive out to the suburbs to find it. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't they're like, in, they're like, for as far as I'm concerned, they're like imaginary because like, I don't, I don't even understand what that is. I had no idea there was one in state. Um, I got with some friends and then they suggested, hey, there is a larger pool and it was outdoor, which again, mm. okay, in Massachusetts, really? Mm. All right, let's go. Uh, turns out not only was it way further out of the way than I wanted to go to get these swims, mm -hmm. but with, uh, there was a lifeguard shortage with the, Mm -hmm. in the world um so they didn't open until 11 and that just wasn't gonna work yeah, yeah. Uh, but at some point i'd definitely like to like to check that out um but not to stick on that i think that's a, a a big thing for me did you ever get to a point where you looked forward to getting in the pool oh i always look forward to getting in the pool. i like it because usually what i would do for the last two months is i would kind of fall asleep watching youtube videos on swimming and so by then, which is something I do with running too, like, but I, mainly I do it before like a big workout or a big race is I like to look at basically people running fast. So like visually, like looking at strides, looking, you know, because I'm trying to get ready for bed. I'm not going to stride, but like I want to look at other people striding. So I'm trying to find videos that also have a lot of B-roll footage of people swimming well. And so like in my mind, visually, I could you know kind of absorb that and then i wouldn't intentionally fall asleep but i would just end up going down the rabbit hole and just watching a lot yeah, of swimming yeah you videos. let the playlist go and it seeps yeah. in through osmosis and yeah <laughs> it didn't but that was the <laughs> idea but then by the, by the morning i'm like all right i'm gonna try these all these things you know like to make my legs not sink today and so it would be exciting um to get in the water and also just kind of like not that i i didn't do like different things every time i fell into kind of like a routine of things that i thought like kind of were working on some of the things i needed to work on the most um and so i found myself like enjoying that it's just that like swimming takes a long time to do so like you swim for 30 45 minutes but it takes like an hour and a half of time like me running just outside 
from like second one, I'm running until like, I mean, I do my cool down as I'm coming back home. So by the time I'm done, it's like, so like the, the percentage of time efficiency is really high with running because I don't right. commute. I just run outside my door and then I run back to my door. Um, but with swimming, it's like, I got to walk over to the gym. I guess I could run over to the gym, but then it'd be kind of weird to be like a little bit clammy when I got there. And then I don't know. So like, it just seems like swimming takes a lot of time. Um, and so that's the thing I didn't like about it. And then if I wanted to do a run, you know, then I would like walk home from the gym that, or sometimes I, you know, I just never could figure out like, what's the most time efficient way to do two workouts. That's, that's, that's something that, that, had a hard that time efficiency. With. Um, and I went through several iterations of the same thing of, mm -hmm. all right, how should I dress? Cause you know, the pool mm -hmm. for me is that the Y is maybe a, let's call it 10 minute drive away. It's not a long mm -hmm. drive, but it's still, I got to get in the car. I got to mm -hmm. go, then I got to park then I got to check in the locker room put my stuff away and it's like all these little things versus mm -hmm. lace up and i'm out the door and i'm running exactly um, so thinking all right well do i just have everything underneath so i can get into the locker room whoop, whoop, and then i'm in mm -hmm. yeah. but even still all right i'm coming out and i don't know about you but i never quite got used to that dry chlorine feel mm -hmm. so i'd always be rinsing off fully knowing I was going to come home and take a shower anyway, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and to that, there were some days where, okay, I think I can wear these tights, come from the swim and go right out and run this trail next to the, next to the Y. Mm -hmm. But that chlorine mixed with sweat and the mm. smell, you know what I'm talking about? It was just yeah, an yeah. awful, I felt like suffocating the entire time and I couldn't outrun the smell because it was me. Yeah, <laughs> and the entire time, I'm smelling that chlorine, and it, it yeah. wouldn't go away. You know, I pour some water over my head, and that made it worse. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what it seems like when you look at like the schedule of pros. Anyway, you know, like it seems like they do all do their swims in the morning, and then they're they're all doing doubles. And so, in like maybe around lunchtime, they're doing some sort of strength or like like dry land work, and then it seems like in the afternoon that's when their run or their ride is. And I don't, I don't see like, unless they're specifically doing like, today's going to be a, like a bike hard, then run hard kind of day. It seems like they're splitting everything up and kind of having like breakfast, lunch, and dinner workouts. And that's, you know, that's the pro advantage, say. right? Like <laughs> yeah. you, you, you've got the time in your day. This yeah. is what you do where, yeah, sure. Middle of the day. Yeah. I'm going to go out for a leisurely, uh, 50 mile ride. Yeah. If yeah. I don't get it in, you know, by a certain right. time, it's not happening. Um, yeah, and, and with more of those adaptations, because we can go on and on about the swimming, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> I think we might circle back to it. But you also made an adaptation, um, excuse me, a, a major adjustment going from your flat bar bike mm -hmm. to getting a proper road bike, drop yeah. bars. Mm -hmm. um, how was that initial feel? I love it. I feel like I took to that pretty well. Um, I'm not saying like I'm a great cyclist, but as, I mean, especially compared to like going from like, I know how to swim at the pool with the kids to like swimming, like that transition was really hard for me. And I still haven't quite gotten any level of mastery on it. But I feel like going from like, a you know, my Walmart bike to my road bike, I feel like I'm like, boom, I'm ready. Let, let me go. Um, and I'm just, I'm off and I'm enjoying it. So I, I really enjoy that bike. I mean, I've got the um, uh, the cleats in and everything like that. I've only kind of had one kind of awkward dismount. And that was at an intersection that I was like, oh yeah, I forgot. My feet are like clipped uh, in, into this bike. Um, and so I kind of had a weird fall there. Um, nothing hey. nothing major, but an awkward one. Right there. But, and you celebrate that too, because mm -hmm. I feel so many people are afraid of that fall. And I try <laughs> to tell you, you're going to fall. Yeah. And you know what? It's been a while. It's few and far between. Mm -hmm. But you could be riding for the next 10 years. And you're still going to have that moment where you do something, you forgot, whatever, mm -hmm. and you're going to fall. Yeah. Got that yeah. first and it, one and out it of the was, way. And it, and it wasn't that bad. And so, but other than that, like, I feel great, like, uh, riding on all the different hand positions, you know, get it grabbing bottles from underneath, even riding with my GoPro or the Insta360. It seems 
it seems pretty manageable. So I feel like, I mean, I could probably write a lot harder if I wasn't holding a camera at the same time, but I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to not hold a camera at the same time. Although I've been trying to figure out a way to mount my camera or my selfie stick to the bike somehow. So I could like snap it in and not have to hold it and then pick it up when I want to pick it up. So, so I'm gonna I figure something out. I ran into a guy um, right next to me as I was setting up transition area mm -hmm. and uh, reminded me uh, of you in, in some <laughs> ways where this guy shows up and he's got an absolute rocket ship of a bike. Okay. And on it, you know, he's looking at the components and he's got his GoPro front mount and everything. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing him at the clinic the night before. Mm -hmm. And he had mentioned this is his first race of any type. Oh, wow. So it was like, yeah. You know, he said he'd been training for four weeks. His first okay. race of any type. He's not transitioning from another sport. So, mm -hmm. all right, hey, good, good for you. So I see him the next morning. Funny enough, you're in my same um, area getting mm -hmm. set up. And I'm like, wait, hold on. This is your bike? Yeah. I, I thought this was your first. And he's got the GoPro front mounted mm -hmm. and all that. And he's like, yeah, yeah. This is what they told me to get. Oh, okay. <laughs> like what? All right, not, not not a bad not a bad setup. Uh, have you seen? Have you looked for any footage from his race? Have you found it? I uh, I haven't, um, <laughs> and I, I suspect his footage was more because uh, it was just pointed at him. He didn't have okay. anything yeah, yeah. else. Uh, he did he did pretty well. I think um, I think he was one of those guys that maybe his first race and you hadn't been training that long, mm -hmm. but you're not coming off the couch. Sure, sure. By no yeah. stretch. You know, the same way where, I think this would have been a different proposition for you and I, if we had said, hey, let's try this out. And, you know, I'm gonna give it four months to learn how to swim. Mm -hmm. And you're coming into it and you're gonna, like that was really the one thing, whereas everything else, all the land-based activities, mm -hmm. Yeah, you're athletic enough that you can make it happen versus, well, if this is truly your first time, I don't think there's a, a, a couch to sprint triathlon plan. Yeah, I don't think I, that's not like a phrase that I think I've heard before, but it, couch to 5K for sure, but couch to triathlon, I don't think so. But that being said, I do think that I overestimated how much would translate from like just being an endurance runner to being able to do the triathlon. I, I certainly overestimated that because like just the the level, I mean, just the exertion on the bike is very different. Uh, I, I mean, I knew it was different before, but I just thought that like, well, you're on the bike for a long time. It's an endurance activity. I understand endurance activities, you know? And so in some parts of me, I got it, but you know, some parts of me were definitely like, oh, it's a little bit different than what I was exactly expecting. And then for the swim, I feel like it translated zero. <laughs> <laughs> in wow. terms of my ability to swim a long distance. Yeah, I I don't think I was telling my wife this. I'm not convinced I could swim like I swam on Sunday again in a pool. Um, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to the next time I get back in the pool to see if uh, if any of that translates back. Because uh, for me, it always felt like uh, the pool was harder than mm -hmm. being out in the ocean for whatever reason. I think the the, the wetsuit and the buoyancy just mm -hmm. did some things for me out in the ocean. But something about the um, confines of the pool, my mind was just looking at it as a completely different sort of activity. And maybe it is. I don't know. But you're right. There were just very little translation. Um, what I will say that I'm still just realizing that this was a major advantage for me is that it was all brand new. Mm -hmm. So there were no bad habits to unlearn and everything was a quick correction. I didn't mm -hmm. have the muscle memory of um, disclosure. I did see your, uh, your recap earlier today. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was like, that's really, really wild because prior to this, I could not, like, I'd need a life jacket. I could not mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. water safety was not a thing I had. I'm not oh, okay. afraid of water, mm -hmm. but you know, I'd always grab my life jacket and we'll go kayak, we'll go do this, do that. Mm -hmm. 
but if I didn't have it, come get me quick. Okay. You know, um, and I didn't realize that was uh, an advantage. So even now, I tell my wife like I can't swim for pleasure. I can do uh, so, this. Yeah, because yeah, you're gonna want to put your face in the water now. Right. That's all yeah. I can do. I can't just kind of hang so out. Used, yeah, I'm used to not putting my face in the water because normally I have contacts and I don't normally have goggles when I go to like, the beach or to the pool. So I'm just used to like keeping my head just like clean above the water, except for occasionally getting dunked or jumping in the pool. And so like I'm I'm still like. I, it doesn't, I'm like, I'm not scared of the water, but I'm definitely terrified and scared of the water at the same time. You know, yeah, it's like I'm, a really I'm, weird, weird thing. Cause I'm just like, I'm not tired, but my brain says I'm exhausted and stop, you know? So it's like a weird combination of things because it's just so many things I'm not used to. Yeah, and I'm not used to any of it. So mm -hmm. I feel like mm -hmm. uh, we went to, we went to a pool party and mm -hmm. I was that weird guy. I couldn't, I couldn't just hang out. You know, everybody was just kind of doing their thing. And I was yeah. like, no, I need my goggles. I can't. I, I, I couldn't just hang out and, you know, float about. And it's like, no, no, no. Yeah. I can go from point to point. Yeah, yeah. That's that's all I can do. Everybody's oh, just kind of funny. treading and hanging out and being yeah. social. I want to I want to hang out. I want to have fun. But I've got one gear. That's yeah, yeah. Well. <laughs> I know the treading water and relaxing gear. That's like my favorite, that's my default gear. This new one where I actually have to put my face in, that that really was new for me. I've done the race, I can I can do this, mm -hmm. but uh, lifeguard, I need some help floating on my back, which mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I still can't do. Yeah, I my, I have a hard time with it uh, personally. I, I don't like I don't like it either. Or like, especially if I've been swimming, people are like, if you get tired, just roll on your back. And I'm like, no, that makes me dizzy because like, I have a little bit of vertigo. And so that just, that throws me off like crazy. Like I, I will, I feel motion sick when I, when I do that. So I'm like, uh, and I'm not that good at it anyway. My feet always kind of just start sinking to the ground real fast. So I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't understand how people can float on their backs. It doesn't make any sense. Well, I was able to do that uh, with the wetsuit that mm -hmm. helped me so much. Um, mm -hmm. But I didn't love it in my training. I would do it to kind of recover. Um, I, I wasn't good enough to signal or to indicate to anyone. So I didn't want to be that guy that, all right, I'm gonna need to take a rest. So let me roll over and kick whoever's coming up behind me or mm -hmm. get trounced on. Cause then I mm -hmm. can't see, I can't see yeah. a thing, which yeah. way I'm going. And so I, I wanted to avoid that as much as possible. And wouldn't you know it, uh, come come race day, I didn't have to use it at all. I, so you were just able to swim the whole 750? All right, we'll we'll get to it, but okay. yeah, I uh, yeah, that's impressive. I surprised the hell out of myself that day. That's awesome. Else. Um, but on our way to that, um, the adaptations. Mm -hmm. So, I know you didn't have the road bike too long, but it sounds mm -hmm. like you took to that right away. As you're going through all these, you know, um, any different tweaks to your equipment, to your nutrition, to your mindset, um, mm -hmm. the game plan that you set out you know i know there were some points um again some of the stuff is out there both of us are putting stuff out there mm -hmm. that um in transparency you got to a point where you were thinking mm, i don't know if it's too late to step it down mm -hmm. now yeah. what other what other processes are, are working as you're coming through yeah this? so um as a as late as my open water swim clinic which was like tuesday like a week ago, literally, literally a week ago, that was my first mile long swim. Um, at that point, I was like, as I was like stepping into the water to do this like group swim, I was like, I wonder if it's not too late. I, I remember the date being relatively like near the start, the race date that I could still switch. And I was like, I wonder if I could still drop down to the sprint. Um, but I'm pretty stubborn. And once I like pick something, I won't, I won't change, you know, cause I feel like ah, if you're gonna change, you might as well quit. I'm not gonna quit, so I might as well stay. So that's kind of like the weird, um, like uh, self-defeating <laughs> circle of logic that goes on in there. So, but it was definitely something I considered a lot because I'm like, I I'm not gonna make it. So the other thing that I started then doing probably a week before that was like, and when I knew I'm like, I don't know, I'll kind of make it. I didn't realize how many boats there, there, there would be out in the water and how much rest I could get on some of those crafts. 
But um, I was like, I got to figure out a way. Like, what am I going to do when I'm too tired to swim? Because I'm, you know, I'm swimming laps in the pool and I'm like, I'm making it to 100 meters. I can swim 200 meters. With a pool boy, I could swim 400 meters relatively easy, but I'm not going to have a Great is that pool boy. Oh. So like, I love that pool boy, but like, there's no way that I was going to be able to make it like the 1500 meters without like resting. I don't know. I don't sure if I was going to make it 750 or even like 300 meters without resting in open water and without any of my toys. Hmm. So I'm like, all right, I got to figure out what my rest stroke is going to be. And I'm like, is it breaststroke? I can't swim like a real breaststroke, like in the Olympics, but I could do like a weird one, like the way my mom okay. swims. Breaststroke like she, is like the most the complicated thing I've ever seen. Yeah, and there were people doing that, and I'm like, that's not a recovery stroke, you guys. But the way I do it, I just keep my head over the water, so I'm basically doggy paddling slash breaststroke. And so that was like, but that takes forever, and it's really tiring too. So I got to figure something else out. And then for some reason, YouTube started feeding me these videos about combat swimmer stroke. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's like a weird no. kind of like uh, mix between uh, like a side stroke and a breaststroke a little bit. You glide a little bit and then you come up over the water and you do kind of a side stroke and then you glide and do like a scissor kick and then you do like a little bit of a side stroke. And um, there's this like this Navy SEAL guy that has been teaching this. And um, I was like, oh, well, look at that. That looks weird. And I was like, I like weird. So I thought I'd give it a try. <laughs> it's crazy enough to work. And it was crazy enough to work. So like when I, so like my last week of swimming, I was swimming 200s where a hundred meters would be front crawl and then a hundred meters would be this combat swimmer stroke to see if I could get to 200 meters at a time. And then I would rest for like 45 seconds and then do it again. And so I would end up swimming like 1500 meters a day um, using this kind of like technique thinking like if I can do that rest for like 45 seconds between each 200 meters I'll be in great shape and I'm timing it and I'm like my front crawl is like 215 when I'm doing it this where I'm getting plenty of rest and this this combat swimmer stroke thing is only taking me two minutes 30. so I'm like all right I think this could work I think I've hobbled I've cobbled together a strategy that may be workable yeah um and so that's what i did so that was the big adjustment for me realizing that like i'm not gonna make it so how can i make it you know so that that was like the big adjustment and like it's not like i sw like searched for alternatives to like um uh maybe i did maybe that's how i got it that's but, like, you get to a point if you're real with yourself that yeah you know i want to have something in my back pocket you know i i went into this fully knowing that all right there's got to be something because if I'm the run walk strategy is a thing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. in, you know, if you're cycling, you cramp up or you get a hill that's a little too big for you, you can get off and walk. That's mm -hmm. a thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's that equivalent? What What's my equivalent for that in the water? And, you know, it looks like you found that because yeah. you're going to need something. Yeah, it worked and I ended up using it probably more than I really needed to. But at that point I was just so shaken by the race. You know, it's like that Mike Tyson quote, everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. I got punched in the mouth real fast, figuratively. I actually didn't get punched in the mouth literally at all, even though it's expecting that um, or a so kick in the face. <laughs> um, I, I felt like a lot of people, you know how like when you're in the water and you're like, was that a jellyfish? I had that feeling, but with people's limbs, throughout the race, throughout the swim portion. And that was kind of weird too. But, um, you know, I, I just got so so rattled that I just ended up using my recovery stroke for well more than three quarters of my swim. Wow. Um, and that's, I gotta tell you, I feel like I had the exact opposite experience <laughs> where- That's awesome. No, honest to goodness, in in training, I, I kept thinking to myself like, all right, in the pool, mm -hmm. I can't string together more than maybe a hundred meters. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm out back, and then whew. so pretty early on, my uh, I had a very intense uh, open water experience mm -hmm. where I went out with my friends and we started going a lot further and faster than I thought we would, then way further than I intended to. And once I realized how far I went, mm. I used everything I had to get back to land and I was wiped out. Mm -hmm. I was hyperventilating and she dragged me back out and showed me that, mm. look, if, as long as you relax, 
if you're freaking out, you're gonna have a bad time. But if you mm -hmm. relax, stay calm, the suit will basically float for you. Mm -hmm. Get your legs up, and if you need to, so I thought, I'm gonna get on my back and do kind of one yeah. of these, not mm -hmm. even a real backstroke, just kind of yeah, yeah. push myself yeah. along. Yeah. And for the longest time, I thought that was my, my game plan. That's how I was gonna recover. And then we get to the swim clinic. So I wanna say my clinic was uh, two weeks before mm -hmm. uh, race day. And she says, uh, you wanna breathe out of the biggest hole in your face, breathe in <laughs> from the biggest hole in your face and out through the smallest. Okay. And I was like, ah, okay, I don't know. Didn't really try it a whole lot in the pool. And the night before they had a safety course all right, so this it's a different person saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on that morning, you know, I see a couple of people getting out to warm up. Um, all right, yeah, I'm told I should warm up and disclosure, I needed to pee anyway. So yeah, I'm gonna head out <laughs> to the ocean and do what I gotta do. And I found myself getting out there and I swam to like the first buoy. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, that was cool. And then I made it all the way back nonstop. Oh, that feels great. I hope I didn't waste all the good strokes in warming yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. But that felt great. And at some point between then and when we get started, um, uh, I'll tell you now, I had this moment where I'm going, I'm going, and I'm, I'm seeing the kayakers on the side, and I'm seeing people all around me. And eventually, I'm anticipating the moment, like, well, when am I? OK. There are people all around me. I may have to stop. Mm -hmm. And then there was a foot. Like, you know, I'm having this thought <laughs> and then I see feet right in front of me. Yeah. And it was a woman in front of me doing exactly what I was scared of doing in front of someone else. She rolled mm -hmm. over and I basically mm -hmm. had to like hit the brakes and yeah. go around because mm -hmm. here are two feet right in front of me. And after that, it was, it was party time. Mm -hmm. And I just kept on swimming. I kept on swimming. I didn't stop swimming. I even had this very surreal moment where because I hadn't swam consistently or um, nonstop for that duration of time, that my silicone ring, my finger started to shrivel and mm -hmm. my ring is loosening up. And I'm like, I'm going to lose this thing in the mm -hmm. ocean. And I'm like, then I'm realizing that, wait, I'm not freaking out. Mm -hmm. I'm having this whole other thought of securing my ring and cupping my hand and mm -hmm. I'm sighting, I'm doing, oh, we're just going to go. We're just going to do this. Nice. And off I went. Nice. I want that. Yeah, that sounds awesome. But I literally did not have that any time during the training. Mm. You know, seeing the distances mm -hmm. that other people swim, you know, um, I know if I had a day where I swam 900 meters, 1200 meters, there were a lot of breaks, mm -hmm. you know, an yeah. awful lot of breaks in those. So like, yeah, I'll take it. That was distance that I logged. But mm -hmm. in my mind, I knew that, all right, I'm going to get out there and have to recover. Yeah. Not once. Amazing. It, it, it blew me away. Yeah. That's awesome. See, I think, I think I just, I definitely panicked in the water. Um, because like, and I think that, for the way we were set up, there wasn't a place for people to like warm up for the swim. You basically were waiting on land and then they had your wave jump in the water and then you could go from there. So like as far as, I mean, maybe I just didn't see it, but I didn't see anybody warming up, like getting in the water before they got up there. And I think that something like that for me, knowing how I like to warm up for races, I like to basically do a hard effort for a several minutes before a race starts. Cause I want to have like, feel like, near race intensity for more than just like 30 seconds okay. so that the body's like shocked then, then still have to time down. to calm. yeah exactly and remember like okay i got punched in the mouth now let's remember the plan because then we can go in all right now we've already been punched in the mouth and we still have the plan so like i feel like i lost some of that and i didn't think about it until you just started talking about it that like oh maybe i need a race where i can warm up in terms of being in the water for a little bit longer than just treading for like two minutes. So that way I can get kind of like, drink some of the lake water, you know, like feel a little bit tired, recover, and then be like, okay, we're good. 
because I didn't feel good at all. You know, I, I mean, there was certain points where I just felt more brave than other parts, but there wasn't ever a part where I felt like, yeah, I'm, I'm in a groove. So I, I just didn't have that. So yeah, it, it, was, it mm -hmm. was very strange. And I mean, it didn't go perfectly, right? Because oh. I, I definitely uh, turned too sharply around the buoy. <laughs> so instead of taking a 90 degree, I was kind of doing a, you know, yeah. 120. I'm like, I don't see the next buoy. Oh, you're heading towards shore. That's not the way yeah. you need to go. Yeah, um, there, there was one point where I like was, I was swimming and I was actually swimming like swim, swim, like regular swimming. And then I like looked up to sight and then all of a sudden I see three or four swimmers like coming at me. And I realized I just swam around the buoy because I crossed over the line. <laughs> so like, you know, I'm not out and back. I'd accidentally like cross back over into like oncoming traffic. And I was like, oh boy, I'm in the wrong spot. I'm in the wrong spot. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I definitely had to like some close calls that way. I was all over the place. <laughs> wow. All told, you made it. And I, you first, but uh, the moment that you could see land, the moment that you knew, hey, whatever else just happened, happened, but I did it. Mm -hmm. What was that feeling like? What was going through you? What were you thinking? I mean, it was, I wasn't thinking. So I feel like through so much of that swim, there wasn't any of like rational brain. It was only like instinct brain that was um, kind of like in control and like kind of taking over. And so like when I felt like I got like picked up out of the water and like basically like slammed back onto dry land, I don't think that I had an, I don't think I wasn't thinking anything. Like things were just happening mm. and there was no like, stream of like thought connecting it all and i was just like oh it's time to run and so like i had to go over that way to run back it was because we had like 400 like a quarter mile from the swim end to the That's transition not fair. <laughs> i was like the more running that we put in this the better it is for me so i was like i was fine with that um because like that part did kind of like like it was like so it was as if it was like just super loud like when you come from like a really loud place and then all of a sudden you go out like out of the back of the concert venue and you like take mm -hmm. a breath and all of a sudden yeah. like the door closes and now like the mu music is like muted and all of a sudden you can hear everything again that gave me enough time to like gather my thoughts um and just be like okay all right i'm back i'm back here i don't know who i was a minute ago but i'm i'm back so like that's so there was no thought i just things were just happening i was reacting to things but i wasn't i didn't i don't i don't know what that emotional really i mean there was relief for sure but like I was more, it's like being woken up in the middle of a very deep sleep. And then it was go time. And then, and then it was time to get on the bike, which was fun. Having not activated your legs so much. So mm -hmm. once, and being, you know, yeah, horizontal for so long mm -hmm. that once you switch back to vertical, it's just, oh, did you feel any of that um, wishy washy coming out? Uh, no, not really. Because I think, again, because like the, the, the distance from the swim end to the transition area was so long. I was kind of just jogging and they had this carpet laid out on top of like the, the pavement, the blacktop that's normally there. Um, and so that was plenty of time for me to kind of like get kind of like loosened up a little bit. So at first I was like, I don't know how woozy I'm going to be. So I was kind of like, you know, just kind of like, you know, when you do like that pretend jog, like if you're mm -hmm. trying to catch a buzz, you do like a little bit of a run. I did that. And then that turned into a little bit more of like a gallop, you know, so I was able to kind of run a little bit more, but I wasn't like sprinting. Cause I'm like, what am I going to sprint for? You know, like it's, it's like 30 seconds. Maybe if I, I, I might be able to say like five seconds if I sprint, but then I'll be much more tired. So I just kind of like jogged and collected myself and then uh, had to, I, I overshot where my bike was racked a couple of times. I like went back and <laughs> forth. I was like, I know that this is it. This has got to be it. I'm in between the 15 sign and the 14 sign. It's, I know it's here, but I couldn't find it right away. And then eventually I found it and then I hit the transition zone and, and I was off. So, you, you you say that, and I think we had very different experiences there too. Because <laughs> um, I'm coming out and I'm on the beach. Okay, yeah, yeah. And as soon as I get back on land, I maybe take you know ten of those tiny mm -hmm. jog steps you're talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah. And both of my hamstrings are tight. Oh really? I have no idea why, but yeah. both hamstrings just like, <clears throat> I'm like ah, this isn't good. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I get to the transition area and, you know, I sit down for a little, I thought I was efficient getting in mm -hmm. and out of transition, but like you, 
I was all about the socks. I tried one time, no socks, and I ended mm -hmm. up, I still have the scars on oh, wow. my, the knuckles of my, my toes. Um, no thanks. So I'm, I'm yeah. sitting down, getting my socks on, and I almost couldn't get back up. Oh, and, wow. Well, yeah, both of my hamstrings are just, mm. and I'm like, you know, someone's asking me, what do you need? What do you need? And I was like, well, you know what you would do if you were just tight on the sidelines, you'd go ride the bike. Hey, mm -hmm. yeah. you get to go ride your bike. Like, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. I do love to ride a bike, don't I? Mm -hmm. And it all felt, uh, it started to take care of itself after that. But yeah, uh, that, that was And it the, didn't bother you on the run? Didn't come back to you later? It sure did. <laughs> it, it sure did. Um, Cause you know, like, I'm sure for you, you were looking forward to get to the run cause that's yeah. your sweet spot. Yeah. Well, once I clipped onto my bike, I'm home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I got in, I had, you know, maybe half a mile of just soft pedaling to ease up. I felt the hamstring start to loosen up a little bit. Mm -hmm. I got down, I got low, got into my gear and it was off to the races and yeah. oh, best part of the day. So cool. Yeah, that was it. That's awesome. But yeah. once that was done and you know, uh, it wasn't, I wish I think you had the same sentiment. I wish I could have done a variety pack where, yeah. <laughs> you know, short swim, yeah, be the longest bike ride possible. Mm -hmm. And sure, I'll take a I'll take a long run too. That's fine. Yeah. But give me more yeah. time on the bike. That would have been awesome. Yeah. I had a great time on the bike too. Um I would say though, like after mile twenty, I was like, Oh, I'm almost done. But then like the last like four or five miles or however much longer it is to get to that forty K, I was like this is long. I feel like this is much longer than it should have been. I don't know what it was, but like after 20 miles, I was, maybe that's because like most of my my long rides have been about 21 miles. So I think that's just what I was used to. But after that, I was like, I've been on this bike for a while now, I think. <laughs> so I was ready to be done. <laughs> but it looked like you had a beautiful course. Yeah, it was nice. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of time underground, which was nice because then it wasn't hot and it wasn't windy. Mm. So that was really cool. Um, so I, I did enjoy that and, and you can, you couldn't have any earbuds in for the, for this race. And so that was different for me because mo usually when I'm out there riding, I do have, um, earbuds in. I mean, I'm usually listening to podcasts, so it's not like I got music blaring, um, especially for a ride. Uh, I'll definitely have podcasts and not, and not music in, but like, it was just different. Cause like, you know, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know about like group rides cause I've not really been on a group ride before, but at least at the race. There wasn't a lot of chit chat on the bike, you know, which I'm oh. I'm kind of used to that. I'm a talker. I'm I'm always the guy that like if you're like in a race and you're like, who the heck is that guy? He hasn't shut up this entire race. We're like five miles in, he's still he's still yammering on. That's me. I'm like, how you guys how you guys doing? Hey guys, I think we're doing great. Let's keep moving. You know, I'm just talking the entire time. I just like to keep talking. Maybe that's just my nervous energy. But on the bike, everyone's quiet, and I'm just like, okay guys, we're doing good. Let's go. And I, if someone would pass me and be like, looking good, that was a nice move. And like, I don't know if they were like, thought that was weird or what, but I'm just like, wait Chances a are they couldn't hear you. Yeah, probably because they're going too fast, but I'm just like, wait a minute, in, in Strava, people are saying right on all the time. So I'm like, <laughs> why? how come there's none of that here? People are passing <laughs> me, I'm passing people, we're not saying anything. We're supposed to be giving the thumbs up thing. So I'm like, what, where's the real you, life version? Where the ride ons, where the... Where the... <laughs> I was well. I wanted kudos. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure they all came pouring in after the fact. Um, well, I, I mean, I didn't want them so much after. I wanted them on the ride. I wanted to like connect with my fellow racers, you know. But it was like it was very different on on the bike than I was kind of expecting in that in that sense. And and then you did eventually make it to the run course. So mm -hmm. yeah, at at some point in time, if you keep yeah. on pedaling, the ride will be yeah. over, and then you got to your sweet spot. Yeah. So you're you're out on the run now. Um, mm -hmm. I gotta say, you definitely looked the part. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what makes it is what made it for me were the shades. Like you had, yeah. <laughs> you had the shades, you had the hat, yeah, yeah. The, the tri suit, man. That yeah. Was it. Well, Ma Matt Legrand hooked me up with the tri suit because I did get another pair of tri shorts, and I was just gonna go with like a, a like a, a cycling uh, top, like a sleeveless one. Um, but the tri suit, I was like, I, I can't. What? I, when else would I be able to wear this? So I got to wear this. So I'm gonna wear it today. Um, and then I was like, 
you know, I needed to get a new helmet. I didn't know if I was going to get there in time. I'm fairly sure I was going to get there in time, but the sunglasses, I was, I had more than 50, 50 that I wasn't going to get there in time. So like, I don't know if I'm going to show up in aviators, gooders or what, but then I had like, so I looked for like, you know, like, I'm like, I, you know, like, you know, I'm not trying to look the part. I'm trying to adapt. Like these are, there's, these are things in this sport for a reason. These are the tools. Correct. Cause they're functional. Right? right. They wouldn't be completely vestigial. Right. So I'm like, I got to, and I did realize like when I have glasses that are like this shape and sunglasses, like I get weird reflections out of my peripheral vision. So I'm like, that must be why they wrap around all the time. So I'm like, all right, I got ordered a pair and they came in and I was really excited. I got to ride with them uh, going down to the expo the day before just to test them out, make sure like they weren't warping. The new on race day. Vision, right? I think. Yeah. And so like I had a day to test them out. And then I also just decided to run with them too. Cause I'm like, I'm running in a tri suit. I gotta leave these sunglasses on. I gotta go for it. Yeah, so, that's the way I mean, to be. I mean, I may not have been the fastest triathlete out there, but I felt like, you know, I, I, I fully immersed myself into the culture. You know, like I didn't like, I didn't, I wasn't the guy showing up to the track practice in basketball shorts. I was like, I'm not gonna be that. I'm not gonna be stubborn. I'm gonna like dive in and do what they do to figure it out and like experience it, try to experience it as like on the level that people that really enjoy this are experiencing i didn't want like my decisions to get in my way now let's let's look at the uh the complete package as an evolution then uh because <laughs> you went from yeah. this extreme of you know what i'm gonna show up on my walmart bike and it's the yeah. bike that i've got and this is what i'm yeah. gonna do <laughs> to i've got proper wetsuit dry <laughs> kit I'm clipping in. I've got my drop bars. Yeah. I've got my baller shades. <laughs> and then I'm going to hit yeah. this run and yeah. do the damn thing. So yeah. that full stop, man. You came from, um, you know, if, yeah. if you want to say a noob's perspective, a noob's experience, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you definitely came out on the back end uh, with quite a bit of experience under the belt and it it showed up yeah you know and like i think part of me wishes that i still would have done it kind of like you know like a runner tries triathlon kind of thing because like like a marathoner tries a triathlon like that kind of approach to it um but i also like didn't want people to think that i was making fun of the sport and again i just wanted to be able to like you know approach it uh without like any hubris and just like there's a reason why all this stuff is here it's functional, it works, uh, it makes for a better experience. And so I'm like, another part of it was like, I've been, I've been working really hard. I, I've had to work a lot harder ask, than I right. thought I was going to. And so I didn't, I wanted to see what I could do without any of my like, kind of like, you know, I'm just going to show up and, you know, and do it, you know, my way. I didn't want any of that energy to kind of get in the way of like, what, well, what can I do uh, on a day where I'm, I'm, I'm really giving it? Uh, all, my all on that kind of day. So that was that part be of the, the change too. Yeah, definitely. And a great part of the change because um, that, I was concerned that that could be the difference between, hey, that wasn't too bad. Let me try it again mm -hmm. versus that was awful. I tried right. it. I checked the box. Yeah. No, thank you. It wasn't for me. Uh, and yeah. personally, yeah. I was very concerned when you said, you know, I don't think I like cycling so much. I'm like, no, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't like the long rides by myself so much, but like I had a fantastic time racing on the bike. I probably had the most fun during the bike portion uh, of the triathlon, which was a surprise to me. I just, I, I don't know. I just was so much fun. Going um, fast is a lot of fun, man. It, it is. But like, I, I still like a lot of like just the cycling, the long rides. I don't know. I like Thomas at the Believe in the Run was like, you guys, you got to get into a group ride and figure that because it's a lot more fun. He's like, he's like, then there's like breakfast, there's coffee and all that stuff. I'm like, that sounds fun. But I'm like, a part of me is like, that doesn't feel like a workout though either. But I'm, I'm assuming like, you know, like if it's anything like the race, you know, there's going to be a workout like aspect to it for sure. And I'm not going to be hurting for like wanting more workout. Um, and I think it'll just be a lot more enjoyable. But I think grinding it out like by myself, like I was, um, that was tough, and I still don't love that. But um, I mean, I'll, I'll give you these little nuggets about the mm -hmm. the group ride. Not that I'm the authority in cycling mm -hmm. by any means. Um, there likely won't be a whole lot of uh, chatter there either. <laughs> Maybe at the start. <laughs> yeah. There, there, 
because yeah. uh, really um, what it comes down to is the pace lining. Once you start working in a yeah. pace line and everybody's sharing the load, um, yeah. you'll go a lot further, faster, working not as hard. Like you'll still work because yeah, you don't want to yeah. get dropped. But uh, the aerodynamic properties mm -hmm. definitely come into play and everybody kind of sharing the load, uh, working together in a group mm -hmm. of three to five or however many are out there with you. Yeah. It's such an awesome feeling. That's cool. And then if you really need that work, you, you guys plan a route with a climb and everybody yeah. is kind of hauling because you lose some of that uh, drafting right. when you mm -hmm. start to go up. Yeah. Find a little cafe stop up there. That's when you chit chat. Okay. That's yeah, when right. everybody recovers. And yeah. then you just went up, so you got to come back down. Yeah. Make yeah. your way home, big loop. Everybody's having a great time. See, that sounds like fun. But it also seems like a really long day, though. That That's was like... the next, that was the next bit. Yeah. It, it yeah. is an incredible time commitment. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I already feel that for a guy who runs as much as you do, mm -hmm. you already know what that means for... Yeah on the back end, family life and things like right. that. So, you know, getting back to it and we'll touch on this in a little bit, but um, I'm gonna finish up my season with a ton of cycling. And, you know, that means some of these longer rides are, are coming back up. And, you know, it was really nice when I was, I say just, but when I was yeah. just training for a, a triathlon where Hey, all these distances are broken up and more manageable that in my training uh and i'm sure you too were more or less over trained for the distances you were going to cover mm -hmm. like, you know you can run a 10k with your eyes closed yeah no shade, yeah. but you are over trained for that mm -hmm. but now you're transitioning to chicago marathon is on deck for you next and yep that's a lot more and the the build up to that and the long runs for that is going to be a, a lot longer day than mm -hmm. what some of your training has already been. Yeah, it is. It's going to take a lot more out of me too. Like I'm not as, I won't be as productive on those long run days as um, some of the triathlon training days. Just cause like, you know, doing even the Olympic distance, like that run isn't that long a run. So like the runs aren't going to be that, that grueling. There'll be workouts for sure, but it's not like, you know, a, an 18 mile run on a Saturday. It's a little bit different, you know? So it'll be, it'll be, a, it'll be a switch up for sure. With that in mind, do you <laughs> see yourself uh, still going back to sprinkle in a swim, sprinkle in a ride to supplement your running? Yeah, I think so. And I think that it'd be really useful on those days where I'm like, I really need a recovery run today. I think my, I might hit the pool or I'll definitely like looking to do and I like to stack Saturday and Sunday to be kind of like a long run and then a long, easy run to kind of get that some cumulative fatigue built in. But I could see like, instead of like, you know, like a 17 mile run and like a, a 10 mile run on Sunday, maybe a 17 mile run and then a long, just easy bike ride for a couple hours on Sunday, I think would also be another way to get in the aerobic fitness. Plus I feel like you're working your legs differently in a more of a strength manner than in, in, in like a running uh, kind of mode. So I feel like there could be a benefit there too. And it's also zero impact. So I feel like there's could be some ways where I can mix it in a little bit that will be able to help me achieve my same goals, but also like just help me do Cause I, I've not only got Chicago, but I have Chicago and CIM. So I've got two marathon right. kind of training blocks that I'm, I'm, it's kind of like one big block with a marathon in the in the, big, in the middle of it. So, um, you know, I got to think about more long-term. So I think that's where sprinkling this stuff is going to be a lot of fun. And even today I was like, oh, you know, I, would, I, would, I could get the pan pedals on today and, and, and swim a couple of laps in the pool. I feel like that might be good, but I wanted to get a run and just to kind of like see where I'm at feeling yeah, today. Whenever you're yeah. feeling a little, uh, a little beaten up or uh, starting to get some of that, um, not just the physical, but um, man, there's that mental burnout is real mm -hmm. when you start to stack up those miles yeah. and that time on feet. Just knowing that, you know what? I can go ahead and do something a little different. And to that, um, I 100%, I, I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm hooked. I was hooked before the race. Uh, so I'll <laughs> definitely be coming back um, and looking to what's next um i've got a century ride in mm -hmm. two weeks cool 
I guess 12 That's, days is now. That, is that too soon to do a century ride after a triathlon? Oh, no. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I say that again. Yeah. From the perspective of uh, not not being new to the sport. Got, um, it, got it. I've got plenty of, if anything, I've been a little down. So mm -hmm. um, I've mm -hmm. got plenty of rides to kind of yeah. ramp back up. And I'm actually really, really ridiculously fresh to go into this and cool. um, nice. try to put in a, a good effort. Uh, yeah, that's, that, that should be a whole lot of fun. Um, I, I was actually channeling some energy. Uh, you had your post-race beer that you just could yeah. get down. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about the achievements here in the celebrations. Um, I've had, I've had this beer now. I don't drink a whole lot, mm -hmm. but I've had this beer in my refrigerator. Baby. <laughs> this is the one I'm going to crack open. Yeah. When I come home, I'm going to have this. It's a dogfish head, 120 minute IPA. Mm, good beer. <sighs> Strong beer. <laughs> I looked at it and I just couldn't bring myself to opening it. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is a, this is an awful lot of beer. And I still got work to do. This is going to put me down. <laughs> um, I, I just, I'm going to respect it. I'm going to put it down, have it another yeah. day. Um, yeah. <laughs> but there was plenty else to celebrate on the day. Um, starting with you, my man, uh, the, the guest of the day. Your highlights, your big takeaways, your celebrations, aside from passing your swim test, what yeah. are your takeaways from the event? I mean, my big one was that, you know, I've never been so like, you know, I've been running for a while and I've been getting very caught up in my paces. What, where am I ranked? Like, how do I stack up? And this one, I mean, even doing a trail ultra race where people are like, you know, it's just about finishing. Did you have a good time? That kind of thing. Like, even then I was like, how did, well, I think, I think I had a good time. Like a good, like not a good time fun. I think I did well time-wise. Right. This, I was just didn't care. I just wanted to push and see how far I could push. And I had such a good time being very, very, like even below mediocre. I was, you know, like bottom third uh, in terms of finishers overall. And so like, uh, um, you know, in a running race, I'd be like, if, if, I mean, I guess if I ran, felt like I ran well, I wouldn't care that much, but I'd be like, oh, why is that number so low? Here, I what don't happened? care at all. Right, right. You know, here, I don't care at all. <laughs> I just had such a good time um, really like just um, getting out there and, and going um, and like the whole time it just felt like you know it was just full gas like the entire time it felt like which um, was a surprise to me that I could do that for three hours um, at right. what felt like such a high intensity but because the disciplines are so different and hitting different systems you know you're able to do that um, and, and able to kind of like survive that long um, whereas like I feel like if I tried to run with that kind of intensity for that long I would have been done a long time ago you know, oh my so goodness! There, there was no no controlling that heart rate. Okay? <laughs> there was yeah. there was no yeah. calming it yeah. down and um, yeah. none of that because yeah. you know not just the excitement of it all. Uh, it looked like you had a pretty hot day, but yeah, it was just hot. the uh, yeah. they're very different. And you know, you're not an efficient swimmer, you're not an efficient swimmer. So no. forget about yeah. the L. You'll take whatever you can get, right? Yeah. Then you get on the bike and. All right, I was able to, I thought I could bring it down a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's just jamming, man. Plus, yeah. I, I've got caffeine in the bottle, so there was nothing coming down. Mm -hmm. And then I get to the run. By this point, you've already been working a little bit, so it wasn't just easing into it. It was, right. all mm -hmm. right. But it's a, again, no slight to anyone, but they're short runs in regards to yeah. what we've been trained for um so it's like well fine i'll be in the red it'll be over soon let's just go. yeah yeah and even looking fun. at I, I was looking at the uh i don't know if you looked at the transition times um mm -hmm. i just yeah. i thought i was pretty efficient going in i had a, a mm -hmm. four minute and some change transition mm -hmm. and then a three minute transition in t2 going from bike to run and then i'm seeing some of the other folks were like a minute yeah, it's hard to imagine. Yeah, what'd you even do? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they've got to be sprinting around like as they're going through and like, you know, flying mount and all that kind of stuff that I, I don't really have a desire to kind of try and master. Because I'm just like, I, I don't know. 
uh, I'm going to be pretty frantic uh, on the bike and on the run. So I, I think taking a breath for me was fine. I felt I don't think I don't feel like I wasted time. I mean, not being able to find your stuff is a waste of time, sure. But like, I don't feel like I was just like sitting around and like catching my breath. I was always doing something, right. um, and I don't feel like I was just. I don't feel like I was just busy for the sake of being busy. I felt like I was constantly moving forward. So I felt I felt pretty good about it. And I think that like, because it's weird that they give you rankings on that too. Um, and I don't know if you got that, but we got rankings oh, yeah. on that and like how I did. And so I felt like I'll I have did, my you know, little sheet. Yeah, <laughs> I, like, I mean, com- I don't have my numbers in front of me, but like I felt felt like you know, um, like compared to the rest of the field, I I did like percentage wise or percentile wise the best in the transitions. <laughs> Not in the run, not in the bike, not, definitely not in the swim. I was like almost last in the swim, but like percentile wise, I did like much better um, in, in the transition. So I, I feel like I must have done decent uh, in there. So I feel like that's that's like the surprise bright spot for me. Nice. Well, and that's a, a great time to a great place to have a, a bright spot too, because <laughs> the it, the adage is always that it's not going to, especially early on. The transitions are not a place that you want to spend a whole lot of focus just get through it mm-hmm. but i have seen plenty of people lose tons of time um and you, who knows what what may or may not happen out there right like yeah. i set up my transition area prepared for most things that i could think of that would annoy me so you know i i had eye drops i was prepared for mm-hmm. in the event that you know the, my salt sand whatever mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. i think just getting into the sport that's what really matters and i've said it already but uh i'm hooked um yeah i'll definitely be revisiting and glad to see that uh you had a very positive experience um you're gonna step it down a little bit or now yeah. that you oh, yeah. checked off the olympic i mean that's your baseline <laughs> No, 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 I'm going down. So I'm going to, I'm going to do some, uh, I'm gonna try to find a sprint. I, I think I'm going to try and find one, like maybe it, like I'm debating, should I do one like middle of winter and like try to go somewhere warm um, and make it like a, a family trip uh, and do a sprint yeah, yeah. somewhere, you know, um, or do something like earlier in the spring, not quite summer. I don't know that I'll be able to get to Boston for 2022. Uh, given like the time, the schedule of my marathons this year. And so I'm like, well, if I'm not going to have to worry about training for Boston for in April, maybe I do a triathlon earlier then. Uh, again, going somewhere warmer because I certainly can't do that in Chicago. So like I'm thinking that I'd like to do that with the idea that, well, maybe I end up doing two for 2022, depending on how I like the sprint. Maybe I do two sprints, maybe a sprint in another Olympic or something like that. But like, I really want to be able to have the experience that you had on the swim. Where like you got in there, you had a good swim, you swam the whole time. Like I, I want, I want to be able to experience that as well. And so like, I also feel like I want to do one sooner than later. Because if I let it go, like oh yeah, I'll do the Chicago next year. Then what's going to happen is I'm not going to swim for another ten months. I'm going to be like, oh, it's time to sign up, and then I'll cram swimming in for, for the like, last two months, two months again. Right <laughs> and that's not going to get. That, I'm going to get the exact same result I have this time. And so I want to make sure like I'm striking a little bit while the iron's hot. I mean, I'm already like kind of booked until December um, for CIM. So like at, at that point, then I'm like, well, I have to try and find maybe a winter trap on somewhere. And then that and, and brings in so many logistics, like tra- how do you travel with a bike? Yeah, and then I got, that's a lot of stuff. And so I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready for all that, but you know, I wasn't ready for this triathlon and I did it. So we'll maybe we'll figure out the next one too. Yeah. And I, I think um, the logistics that you mentioned, and that's probably a, a good place to uh to leave it but if you're going to look at this down the line there's no way that zwift is not in your future now we've talked about that before Mm -hmm. if you're Mm -hmm. looking at a warm weather triathlon somewhere else you're gonna need to ride yeah a lot Mm -hmm. a lot a lot so uh we'll we'll get you get you nice and set up and we'll we'll see you in watopia yeah Yeah. well you know i uh I, I canceled like my paid subscription a while ago because I wasn't riding my other setup that I had. But now that I have a bike, um, you know, I could get a smart trainer because I think that's really where it's at. I think that that makes it so much more fun um, when when the gears change or like the the um, 
the difficulty changes for you uh, <laughs> rather than you having to set it yourself. I feel like that's where that, I feel like that's where the game really starts to come to life uh, and the workout and the, and not the only that, that happens. The big thing that uh, we touched on before mm -hmm. is that um, efficiency, mm -hmm. right? And just being able to get it done. Um, I'll go ahead and say it on record. I miss riding on the smart trainer. Uh, oh yeah. Dude, it was so great because I didn't have to wait for daybreak. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I could <laughs> literally roll out of bed. I'm up at four by 4.30, I'm pedaling. Yeah, and I mean, I and can, in the wintertime, you're not going to see daylight for another two hours. So even yeah. if it just happens to be a nice day, and the yeah. best thing there is, all right, if I have a three-hour ride scheduled, but I started at 4.30, I'm yeah. done as you guys are Know, making pancakes and ready for breakfast yeah i mean that's the that's the dad trick right you got to find the found time you know <laughs> and so like you got to figure out a way to work out while everyone's still sleeping um if, if you want to still participate in family life on the weekends you know like that's the trick so yeah i just got to figure out a place to put all this stuff inside <laughs> in our little apartment yep. um so we'll see about that but you know i'll figure i'll figure something out well, the story continues, man. I, I love yeah. to hear it. Uh, yeah. Ko, I got to tell you, thank you so much for taking the time, man. This has been awesome. Um, not that anyone doesn't know where to find you, but I'll yeah. be sure to uh, link your recap uh, down here so they can get the full details from the horse's mouth, how it went. And I'll hopefully get my recap done later this week. Cool. I can't I wait to see it. Oh, cool. Cool. I, uh, Spoiler, I didn't record hardly any of my own footage mm -hmm. after uh, uh, seeing some mishaps with lost cameras. <laughs> yeah. I didn't chance it. Uh, yeah. So I'm still aggregating some of that footage, but cool. um, I had a really good uh, turnout of friends and family uh, come out. So we're putting it all together and it should be uh, ready later this week. Awesome. Very cool. All right, Brother Co. Thanks for hanging out, man. It's been real. All right. It's been great talking to you. What it do?